Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Spellcasting 101. Hope you're not getting tired of attending these classes, because we have a few more to attend. Uh, so at 1 o'clock, that is when we have our General Magic 101. So we're just going to wait until then. So there we go. Okay, settle down. Today we're going to look at the creatures which Otto Fernlips has identified in his treatise on 11 magical creatures published in 855. So at this point, now we take notes. First on Fernlips' list is the Kankersaur, whose massive 50-yard body can only sustain its size by producing a constant internally generated levitation field. Often hunted for sport, it possesses sharp teeth and strong jaw muscles. It can stomp a horse to jelly with one tap of its massive feet. The greatest danger posed by the canker sore, however, comes from the open sores which cover every inch of its scaly, bot scaly skin, including its long, swinging tail. A single contact brings an onslaught of terrible diseases, usually leaving the victim begging for death. In order to maintain distance, canker sores are best fought with a shooting weapon, such as a sling or bow. Next is the Vamoose, a creature that is half moose, half gorgeous woman. It lures its victims in with spells promising sexual delights, then gores them on its great antlers. The Vamoose can feed on anything from finely prepared meats to raw nuts and berries, but it prefers the raw, steaming flesh of recently gored young male sorcerers. Fireballs, swinging weapons, and spells of aging are particularly effective. The Mud Devil appears in the Fern Lips Treatise for its ability to remain submerged in a mud bath for hours, even days at a time. Nasty-tempered, they live in small nuclear family groupings in cottages in the woods. Mud Devils run on the large side with pointy teeth and even longer, pointier claws. Their favorite activities are tearing intruders to shreds, eating, copulating, and tearing intruders to shreds. The entry from Rotting Fence Post's Battle Guide on Mud Devil Combat is only three words long. Avoid, avoid, avoid. We're all familiar with puffer slugs commonly found in flower gardens. When frightened, they inflate to 40,000 times their normal size. Despite its threatening appearance when inflated, a puffer slug is completely harmless and subsists entirely on invisible airborne plant spores. Any pointy weapon will quickly let the air out of this fellow's sails. Anyone who grew up on a farm knows about hell hamsters. They live in piles of leaves, wood chips, and manure, have an incredible leaping range of 90 feet, and can devour entire live goats in a single gulp. You'll remember hell hamsters from before. Although one hell hamster is not usually fatal to humans or other intelligent races, they often travel in pairs. A hell hamster is best vanquished using hell tweezers. The most dangerous variety of dragon, an atomic dragon, grows to twice the size of a normal dragon, has armored skin which even iron weapons cannot pierce, and breath which is filled with a magic poison called radioactivity. A mere singe of atomic dragon breath will cause the victim to sicken and die. The only decent weapon against an atomic dragon is a lead-plated sword. You remember that from the simulation we did recently. The wigwig is a nasty insect which burrows into artificial hair pieces and lays its eggs there. It can only be killed during a double full moon, and even then only by using an enchanted counterpunch. An important note, the Dimbub spell, which restores receding hairlines, has been known as a known side effect of rendering wigwigs sterile. No longer considered magical by, th uh, by thaumaturgic researchers is the two-headed attorney. As you know from grade school, two-headed attorneys don't have two heads, but I'm really called that because of the multi-eyed bumps on each side of their otherwise headless shoulders. Two-headed attorneys are also not attorneys, but are merely called that because of their proclivity to suck blood from widows and orphans. Most weapons will have some effect on this monster, but the most potent weapon is the spell of disbarment. Some believe the tales of the lockpick monster are the products of overly imaginative sailors, or bored sailors, or just plain drunk-on-navy-grog sailors. 
Others swear they have seen the long, thin neck and rows of sharp teeth thrusting up from the treacherous waters of the southeastern Fizzbuttle Ocean. The tanker, the Tangerclops is a fearsome cross between a Cyclops and a Tangerine. This one-eyed fruit can bash you senseless and devour you in seconds. Their one weakness is an unthinking fear at the mention of the name Bent Screwdriver, inventor of the automated tangerine peeling machine. Finally, we come to the dreaded Acid Storm, a floating cloud-like creature which hovers over a town, pouring down torrents of acid until all residents and buildings have been melted down into one easily digested puzzle. With our modern acid storm detectable network, we can now get ample notice to vacate towns before an acid storm attack. However, travelers in the countryside are advised to pack a glass-coated poncho. The glass begins stirring in preparation to depart. The professor raises his voice to be heard over the rustling. For next time, read the treatise on magical plants and shrubs by Henry Fluffy Seed Pods. All right. I thought you were supposed to get a map at one of these. Okay. So, again, as usual, I'm going to read my notes. Now, the next class after this is not going to be in Melting Wolf Hall, but the Sorcerer Stadium, because Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays from 4 to 6 is Physical Skills 101. And so, again, let's get past all of those. Oops. Oh, no, that's right. Alright, uh, so, their canker sore, avoid contact, shooting weapon, vamoose, spells of aging, mud devil, puffer slugs, pointy weapon, hell hamsters, uh, atomic dragons, wig wig, uh, two headed attorney, lockpick monster, southeast fizz buttle ocean, tanger clops, uh, sorry, acid storm, and a uh, glass coated poncho, magic plants. So, yeah, that was that class. I think there might be one or maybe even two of those that uh, is useful at some point. But it won't be for now. Uh, so, before class, let's, um, let's examine the cafeteria. Just cause. Uh, you have entered the school cafeteria known as the Cup and Sorcerer. It is also known by a few other names, none of which can be repeated even in a crude, conscious, <laughs> conscienceless game like this. Since it's not a meal time, no food is being dispensed, and the cafeteria is pretty empty. Exits lie to the north and south. So, uh, anything I can look at here? I can look at the oven. The oven reeks with layers of baked grease. I can look at the pan. Numerous greasy cast iron pans hang from their greasy handles along a greasy wall. And I can look at the pot. Phew! The pot is filled with some typical food surface concoction cross between raw sewage and toxic waste. And let's just look at the table. Looks like about time for this table, semi-annual cleaning. Now, I think if you head north, you head back to Donkey Dong Hall, which is where you came in. Uh, so... I head over to Sorcerer Stadium. Uh, you're in the stands of a vast arena, known for its imposing architecture, enthusiastic fans, and horrendous sight lines. A scoreboard looms over the field, and pennants from past championships hang above the exits to the east and southwest. So, I'm trying to think... Alright. Let's just see what happens, because I don't remember at all what happens when you uh, participate in your sports education thing. Sorry, I'm getting yawns. Alright, so, uh, let's see. There's the pennant you can look at. I said look at... The most prominent pennant proudly displayed reads Sorcery University Weasels, Pokeball Champs, 1035. It's from the championship season two years ago, and it was the first Pokeball pennant in the school's 300-year history. So, I don't know if you have to sit. Let's try sitting. You're in the stands. A bell rings signifying the start of late afternoon class. A group of freshmen straggle onto the field, and physical skills class commences. Normally you'd be participating, but you're excused this week due to a slightly sprained pinky. Ah, uh, yeah. So, that's coming back to me. You don't actually really do anything because of that. Um, just a curious. What happens if you watch? Watch 
sports. Um, oh, that's just reading the article in the paper. So, all right, so let's um, examine the scoreboard. This week's schedule. So you can see there um, what is uh, what is playing when, what's happening when. <laughs> so I forget exactly what happens when you attend these things, like something in concert or one of the sports events. Um, I might later. We'll see. Uh, I have to remember a lot of these times and to do them when. And yeah, um, examine the stands. Clear that the person who designed the stands was unfamiliar with the concept of legroom. Uh, can I play sports? I can't play sports. I'm just fooling around right now. Or oh, let's see. Uh, examine gym class. You've never seen a more pathetic and out of shape lot. All right, so I don't know. Ah, uh, I think I'll end this video then, and um, uh, be excited because there's going to be some uh, story stuff in the next video and uh, and fun things. So I'll see you then. Let's yeah. Okay. Ta ta.